Hello and welcome to a new video on the Cryptography for Everybody YouTube channel. Today we will have a look at a very interesting topic. And to be honest, I'm not an expert with this topic, but I recently got into this topic and I think it's quite interesting and it's also quite nice to have a visualization of it in Crypto2. And the topic we deal with today are number stations. And number stations are radio senders or stations that send, as the name suggests, numbers. I structured the today's video into different parts. In the first part, we will have a look at what is a number station. Then we will see a nice classification of number stations. After that, we will listen to real number stations, or at least to recordings of real number stations. And finally, we will create our own simulation of number stations in Cryptool 2. What is a number station? A number station is a shortwave radio station which broadcasts numbers, as I already said, or data in other digital or non-digital formats, for instance, Morse code. And the quite interesting thing with number stations is that number stations are believed to be operated by, for example, secret services or, for instance, embassies to contact their secret agents in foreign countries. And the transmitted messages of these number stations are, of course, and that's why we included the topic in uh, the videos on this YouTube channel, the messages are encrypted. And the used encryption methods are most probably one-time pets. So you won't see any decryption or decipherment of radio stations or uh, number stations transmissions on this channel. But we will have a look at these since I think these are quite interesting. And the messages transmitted by number stations often start with a so-called preamble, which identifies the sender. For example, a song or some sounds that identify the radio station. And then the messages are read in form of numbers, Morse codes, etc. And the end of a message is also indicated by something, for example, the end or some special sound, or in the case of some Soviet number stations, a bunch of zeros. And often groups of five numbers are repeated in a block. And these blocks are often then repeated to reduce errors. So we have one block with numbers, then the repeated block, then a second block of numbers and the repeated one. Or you could have different blocks and then these all repeated. And the amount of number stations had its peak during the Cold War, but they nevertheless still exist today. Let's have a look at a classification of number stations. And during my research on number stations, I came across this Enigma 2000 uh, group, so E-I-N-I-G-M-A 2000, and Enigma 2000 stands for the European Numbers Information Gathering and Monitoring Association. And this group was created or created their own classification of number stations. And Enigma is a non-profit union of amateur radio operators and listeners that are interested in number stations. And it was found in the UK. And here is the classification of the Enigma 2000. A number station name starts with a letter followed by a two-digit number, example E22. And I think this is a quite easy and quite nice classification. And here you see which types of letter they use. So we have E for an English number station. English means that the voice you can hear uh, is English, but that does not mean that this number station is located or comes from an English-speaking uh, English country. Then we have G for German, we have S for Slavic languages, and we have V for other languages. Then we have M for Morse code, and we have X for something totally different, for instance, polyphonic tones. Now I thought it would be interesting to hear two real-world number stations. And a very famous English number station that does not exist anymore or that does not send anymore right now is the E03 Lincolnshire Poacher. And this Lincolnshire Poacher was or is a British shortwave number station. It was operated at Cyprus from mid-1960s to June 2008. This was the last time um, the radio operators received numbers or transmissions from this station. And it's believed to be operated by the British Secret Service SIS, 
and yeah, they use this to transmit probably messages to their secret agents. And here are two nice links where you can find more information. The first one is the English Wikipedia article about the Lincolnshire Poacher number stations. And the second one is from numberstations.com. Here you find many, many number stations and here you find the E03 Lincolnshire Poacher number station. But now let's listen to Lincolnshire Poacher. And if you use headphones, I advise you to maybe reduce the volume since it's quite noisy. I use now the VLC player to play back the recorded sound. As I said, when you wear headphones, uh, take uh, be, be careful. <laughs> And as you've heard, the number station starts with a song. And I think the song is the reason why they called it Lincolnshire Poacher. <laughs> and it repeats this song several times so that the secret agents that want to or have to receive the message can tune to the right frequencies and then listen using the radio. And then after a while, you can hear a female voice reading out these numbers. And the secret agent then would have written down these numbers. And after that, when the transmission uh, is completed, they would try to, or they actually would decipher this and then get their orders, what they should do or what they should not do and so on. Yeah. And now I have an example of a German speaking number station, the so-called G06, uh, the German lady. And this number station is believed to be operated by the Russian Secret Service, GRU. And this is also interesting that Secret Service has not used their language, but they used other languages. An explanation for that could be that they um, transmitted this to, or that the receiver were German-speaking people, for instance, in East Germany. Or it could also be to fool others that are listening to this number station, believing this is not a Russian uh, number station, but for instance, a German number station. And it's also believed that early variants were operated by the East German Stasi, which was the secret service organization of East Germany before East Germany broke down. And as of 2014, G06 is the only German language station that is still active or that was still active. You can also find details on this number station using this link here. I will also post this link or all these links below the video. Now let's us listen to this German number station. And as before, uh, be careful, the recording contains a lot of noise. When you wear headphones, um, tune down the sound maybe. I will also play back the number station sound using the VLC player. As you can see, the recording is quite long, so we will probably skip to a more interesting part. I actually haven't listened to the complete 15 or 14, 33 minutes uh, recording here, but let's listen to it. As you can hear, the female voice um, continuously place uh, 947, 947, 947. Maybe it's an indication which uh, for, the, for the receiver, who's the correct receiver, or it's to identify the number station. I will now skip forward. Maybe we can find a part where she actually reads some different numbers. We have 28372, which means 28732. And it's probably repeated now. It repeated the same numbers. And now probably we will hear different numbers. Yeah, and we have different numbers. And this goes on and on and on until we reach the end of the transmission. And here the same, the secret agents or the receivers would write down the digits or numbers and then after finishing the transmission, they would 
decipher these using the correct cipher. But since we think that all of these transmissions are encrypted using a one-time pad, it's impossible for us without having the original one-time pad. And of course, we don't have this to decipher these messages. Now we come to the practical part of this video. And I thought it would be quite nice and quite interesting to be able to simulate our own number stations in Cryptool 2. That does not mean that we will send these numbers using radio. I don't have any radio uh, which, that I can use to send these numbers, but I thought it would be nice to enter some digits and then, then be able to play back these digits. So let's go to Cryptool 2. I'm here now in Cryptool 2. As you can see, I still wear my headphones because I of course want to be able to also listen to the playback while recording. And I want to now show you the um, number station simulation that I recently created in Cryptool 2. But I think before I do this, I will also show you some updates on the Morse code that we have, since number stations also um, transmit Morse code. And it's just a short update. Here we have the Morse code um, template. You can open this. And here we have the Morse code. And in the old version of the Morse code component, you could um, select this component here. This, this encodes Morse code, this decodes Morse code. And then you can change this here to play the Morse code. So I remove this text output here. And then when you press play, it actually played back the Morse code. But I changed this. I thought we have an audio output component. So why not use the audio output component instead of directly playing it in the Morse decoder. So you have to connect an audio output. And the audio output I also updated, and I think this is really nice because it's now able to display the audio it playbacks in a visualization here. So I think I will reduce the sound here. So this is also something I added. You can uh, change the volume of um, the Morse code that you play back here. You have to change this in the Morse decoder because it actually creates the tones that then are playback using the audio output. And then when we press play, you now probably can hear, and I stop it right now, the Morse code. I also updated the Morse code and now it uses a nice sinus wave instead of a square wave. I think it sounds much better right now. Um, I recently created a video about Morse code where you can listen to this and now I think it's more clear the, the pure sinus wave. And what you can see here is you can see the audio of the Morse code and you can see the different letters here and, and the timings and so on. So you can now really see the Morse code that's playback. And I think this is a really nice update of our Morse code uh, components and the audio output components, which we will now use with the number station simulation. So I close this here, go back to the start center and I search for numbers station. And we have a new template. This is not the final version. I think I will update this a little, add some um, this description, mem memo fields, describing what you can see and so on. But I will do this now in the video. I will tell you what you can see here. And it's a quite complex template. And this is why it takes some time to load. And I remove this Audi here. And here we have the template. And as you can see, it's <laughs> it contains a lot of components. And this is also what I really like with Crypto 2. These components are all very basic components, but using these basic components, you can create some complex workspaces like this one. And I will also increase the text size here and change this to uh, Courier New, I think. Yeah. Okay, what do we have here? First of all, I, I zoom in a little and we, we, we have a look at the first part here. So this Text input here, as you can see, contains digits, digit sequences. And to be honest, these digit sequences are just randomly generated digit sequences that I created for this template. Before the digit sequence, we can see these dashes here, and then the space, dash, dash, space, dash, dash. Since every number station or many number stations have a preamble, I thought it would be nice to have a, some kind of preamble. And I recorded some Morse tones as a preamble and when you write this dash then this preamble is playbacked 
And our preamble here is one, two, three, four, five times these Morse sounds. And then we have uh, a long pause. So here we have silence and then the numbers start, then the numbers are repeated and so on. Now let's have a look at the remaining parts of the components uh, of the workspace here. So here we have some decoding logic. So this part here is a loop and the loop goes character by character through this text. And it extracts a single digit here. So here we have in this output, we have a single digit and we store or we send this to the variable components that we have in Crypto2. The variable components are nice components that allow us to connect parts of workspaces, but no, there's no need of a direct line between these. As you can see here, we have digit here as variable input. And then we have here somewhere here, we have digit as variable output. So our decoded digits or our, our tokenized digits or extracted digits go into this digit component. And then we have another variable, but it reads from the variable. And here we have audio sample. And the audio sample go through this gate here. And this gate is only for synchronization in this workspace. And after this gate, the audio sample goes to our newly created or updated audio output here. And then, of course, the audio sample is uh, played. Now I will zoom out and you can see here below 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 uh, copies of the same, you can say, sub workspace. And here we have a 0, we have a 1, we have a 2 and, and so on and so forth. So here, here we have the digits from 0 to 9. And then on the, um, I have to zoom out probably, here we have the space and here we have the preamble. So these blocks here are for decoding our current digit. So every sub workspace fires or um, returns the correct recording of <laughs> actually my voice and the preamble and sends it via the, um, okay, and I zoom now again in, sends it send it using the um, variable components to the audio output. So this workspace decodes um, the message you put here in and playback these using pre-recorded um, audio um, samples. And I actually created a single um, <laughs> audio input and a text input. I think I will show you this also. So when you want to replace the digits with your voice, you need an audio input and you need a text input. Uh, sorry, a text output. You have to connect these. Then in the audio input, you have to select the correct microphone and you have to change the text output here that then contains the recorded audio uh, to append text input because the audio input records um, parts of the audio. So it, you get blocks. And of course you want all blocks of your um, digit that you then uh, input via the microphone of, of your voice. And that is why we have to append the text that appears here. I try now if this works. Test, test, one, two, three. And here you can see you get a lot of numbers and these numbers are actually um, raw audio data. So this is not a WAV file or an MP3 file. It's actual recording of your voice or the audio that you put into your microphone. And it samples the audio with 8 kilohertz. So we have 8,000 numbers here and actually we have 16,000 since we have two numbers per sample. We sample with 16-bit sample um, um, size. And so, as I said, the sample rate is 8 kilohertz, meaning 8,000 samples per second. When you recorded your digit, you could just control A, control C. And what I did, I removed the spaces and the line breaks inside this um, audio recording. Then we go back to our template. And now let's have a look at, for instance, the zero here. This is the data for zero. And as you can see, these <laughs> many, many numbers. And as I said, this is the raw audio data. And this can be playbacked or played by the audio output. And you can do this for all these um, 
digits here and you have just to um, replace the audio data in these text inputs here in each of these decoding blocks. And now when we press play, I first close the recording workspace. We don't need this. And I will re-enable uh, my headphone, switch it on, it, because it automatically switches off and no audio is played for some time. Now it's on and we can now play our um, code here. And let's listen to it. And you probably should hear my voice. I don't know if it's very loud. Maybe you have to increase the volume to hear it. And it starts with the preamble, as I said. And you can see the visualization here. Now it's, I don't know why it's a little out of sync with the audio, but when the um, digits start, it should be in sync, the visualization with the digits. Six, five, seven, one. Six. And repeat it. Six, five, seven, one, six. A longer break and then the next numbers. One, two, nine, six, one. And you can see the decoders one, here always firing, two, nine, but of course only the six, correct decoder returns one, the correct digit. Two, three, six, seven, one. And now we have our own three, number station. Six, seven. I will stop it right now and then remove everything. And in the end, we have the zeros. Zero, 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 zero. And I think this is really nice simulation and visualization of a numbers station. Yeah, and you could now download this template or Crypto 2 in the current nightly build. It already contains this template here. And then you could try to, for instance, replace the digits with your own voice. And then you can simulate a number station using your own voice. And I think this is a quite interesting topic. And I, I don't think many people are aware that these number stations um, exists even today. But as I learned, we have right now no German number stations, or at least I read this. I'm not up to date, of course, with these number stations. I'm not in that community. Maybe a viewer uh, can give some updates of what kind of number stations you can actually um, listen to right now. And all you need to have is a radio to listen to these, and you can uh, receive these and, for instance, record these. And you could, of course, try to decipher these. But as I said, they probably use one-time pads today, so it's impossible for us to decipher these without having the correct pads. Yeah, and this is everything I wanted to show you in this short video. I hope you liked it. It's some, it's a kind of different video. We have no cryptology at all right now. Of, okay, of course, we have these um, one-time pads if you're interested in one-time pets, I also created a video about one-time pets, then please watch this. And yeah, as I said, it's everything I wanted to show you. If you like it, please give a thumbs up. And if you did not yet subscribe to this channel, I would be really happy if you do so. This really helps us to grow the channel, make Crypto 2 more popular. Yeah, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.